Hello. We're going to do this thing. Uh, begrudgingly. Uh, Illini Post Game Show. That's Craig. I'm Logan. Uh, Illinois goes to West Lafayette and uh, ends up being close, but fall to the Boilers 76 71. Um, not really sure where that puts Illinois seating wise, somewhere seven through nine, uh, but we'll discuss that later. Um, before we get started, as always, drop a like. If you're new here, hey, welcome. Uh, get in the chat. Let us know your thoughts. I know um, we're going to have plenty of things to probably discuss or maybe not discuss. We'll see if uh, my co-host wants to even talk on this show. Um, but hey, if, if you guys want to chat, feel free. Get in the conversation. Uh, subscribe to the page. Uh, once basketball season will have is over, we'll have more things going on. But uh, for right now, there's still plenty of Illinois basketball to talk about. Hopefully... Uh, a few more games of it. Um, Craig? Craig's saying there will be two more games left in this season. I'm hoping for at least three. Um, actually, I'm hoping for four. I want four. I'm still going to, I'm just, I'm still going to be the optimistic one here. I feel like I'm the only one in, in all of Illini country uh, that is optimistic about the, thing, the way things are going. Uh, let's just get this out of the way. This was Jekyll and Hyde yet again. Uh, first half, this Illinois team has consistently come out extremely flat. Um, if you look at the breakdown, Illinois was trailing 47, 26 at halftime. That's a night or a 21 point deficit at halftime, uh, outscored Purdue 45, 29 in the second half, uh, which is how this broke down. Um, yet again, two completely different teams, uh, in 20 minutes of play. So I will open it up to you, Craig. Do you have anything, anything you would like to say to start this show off or yeah, how you feeling? Give me your thoughts. What is today? Give me an expression. Today is um, March, March 5th. 5th. Sunday, March 5th. Last day of the regular season. I have no idea what this team is capable of. I have no idea who this <laughs> team is. They played 31 <laughs> games, and I have no clue anything about this team. I know they're a terrible three-point shooting team. I know they are a stupid basketball team. Those are the only two things I know, and it's March 5th. Yeah, that's that's fair. That is fair. I, and I, I get where you're coming from. Uh, I agree. I thought at this point we would there would be more of an, ident an identity uh, to this team. Um, but alas, uh, we're here and there is none. Um, I don't. I know you probably turned this game off at one point. I had it on the whole time. I admittedly zoned out for most of the first half when they were down twenty points. Um, and I didn't really tune myself back in until it became like an 11 point game in the second half. So, uh, bear with me if I forget a thing or two about what happened in this game, but I'm sure you can, you can get over that. Um, breaking some things down, Matt Meyer led the scores, led all scores for Illinois with 16, uh, 16.6 rebounds. Matt Meyer, one for 10 from the three point line today. Rhythm killer. Rhythm he killer. Is, he is the best three-point shooter on this team, and he was one for ten. Terrence Shannon, 13 points. Sincere Harris, uh, double digits today. Him and Luke Goody in double digits. Sincere with 11, had, uh, I believe, seven points in the first half. Um, yeah, seven of his 11 in the first half. Luke Goody played significant minutes in this game. Eight points in, this, in the – no, what am I looking at here? Uh, Luke Goody, 10 points in 16 minutes. Uh, that was all the double digit scorers for Illinois. Um, I said Meyer with six boards, sincere Harris, five boards, uh, Coleman Hawkins, six points, six assists, four rebounds. Um, I don't even know where to begin here. Um, yeah, this was just two completely different halves of basketball. And this is what we've seen. We saw this, uh, against Northwestern. Uh, we saw this against, um, who else was it? Ohio state that they did this to us too. Uh, yes. I, I mean, this this would have been a huge road win. Uh, this is a, a win that Illinois, had they not laid an absolute egg in the first half, this is a win they could have had and a win they would have needed uh, in terms of seeding and uh, in both tournaments. Um, but at this point, it is what it is. Um, that that game wasn't really going to change too much of your season, as opposed other than maybe you know a couple lines on the a couple seed lines. Um, the three point shooting, yeah, that's 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 tough. Uh, seven for twenty two from three. I mentioned Matt Meyer, one for ten. Uh, clearly, the the monster was not helping him today. Uh, Shannon was two for three. Sincere Harris, uh, or no, Luke Goody was two for two from the three point line. He had that one 
uh, more or less Hail Mary towards the end of the game that went in. Um, what else do we say? What else is there to say? Anything good? Anything positive that you have? Or is this all negative? Let's just, okay. I know uh, you're. No, saying- I mean, Ty and Sincere were, they were the reason Illinois got back in it. Correct. I mean, I thought they were fantastic. Sincere has not played like that offensively all season. I mean, the defense on, on Zach Eady was terrific. I mean, he yeah. still finished with 17 points, but I mean, like, that's, I'm, I'll take that any day. Yeah. Uh, the way today, they were able to shut him down in the second half, they limited him, they crashed on him, they double tripled him. Uh, it uh, oftentimes led to turnovers. I mean, that's what brought Illinois back in this game. Zach Eady, is he big or is he good? Whatever. Doesn't today matter. Solidifies it. He's just big. He's, he's just he's big. Not good. He's if, just if he big. Was, if he was 6'10, he would be an average middle of the road, maybe Big Ten basketball player. He does Probably. all he does is catch it above his head where no one else can catch it, turn and throw it in. That's it. If it takes any skill, he can't do it. Yeah, no, that's it's fair. But uh, alas, here we are. Uh, he is that tall, and he is uh, <clears throat> that means he is that good. So, um, but still, the the way they were able to limit him um, in the second half, especially, was huge. Um, Brandon Newman kind of what came out of nowhere. He had 19 points for Purdue. Um, Braden Smith had 15. All three of them were in double figures for for the Boilermakers. But yeah, I mean, I think as you said, I think it was it was sincere Harris and, and Ty Rogers that kind of led the spark there, um, especially on the defensive end to to help bring Illinois back. Luke Goody played good minutes. Um, it was a different rotation at the end than we saw the last game, uh, which I thought was interesting. Um, Luke Goody played a lot more in this game than he had in the past. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Brad clearly just playing the hot hands there and whichever. Uh, rotation is is doing the thing, and that's that's where he's going with it. Um, let's go to the chat. Let's see what people are in the chat are saying. What do we got here? Anything? Any, I haven't even looked at anything, so let's just see what people have to say. <clears throat> Michael, welcome, Michael. Proud of how we fought back. Makes me feel better about the postseason. Um, I will start by by agreeing with you. I am also proud of how this team fought back. Um, somewhat does make me feel better about the postseason. Um, you cannot afford to go down by 20 points at any point the rest of the season. You just can't. Um, I don't care who it is. Uh, Purdue is obviously a good team. I don't think Purdue is a team that's going to make it to the second weekend of the tournament. Uh, I don't think they're that good. Um, but we'll just have to see. But no, I mean, the, the way this team played in the second half, yeah, that obviously has to make you feel positive. But you cannot, you cannot... I don't care who you're playing. I don't care if you're playing Colgate or if you're playing Kansas. You cannot go down by 20 points in the first half and expect to win a basketball game. Just bar none. I don't care how good this team plays in the second half. Just have to, that has to end. So whatever they have to do, I don't know if Brad has to just ask for 20 points to be spotted up in the first half to start the game. Uh, If that's how they have to play, they seem to be, they seem to play better when they're down 20 points. Uh, so maybe that's what he has to do. Maybe he walks into Chicago on Thursday uh, and says, please put up 20 points on the board for the visiting for the other team. And maybe they'll play better then. I don't know. That's the most frustrating part. Like your division one, big 10 basketball players. How are you not prepared and pumped up? Like the, Illinois was walking for the first five minutes of the game. They looked like they were still in bed. Their feet were in cement. I don't understand. You're playing in the best Big Ten arena. The fans are, I'm sure the fans are just screaming obscenities at you the entire pregame warm-up. How does that not fire you up? And they came out and know. walked through the first five minutes. This team has not played. I don't know their record when they're playing these early games, but they have not played well in early games. Um, and unfortunately, there's a good chance you're going to be playing early games for yeah. a while. So I don't know. Uh, Got to execute the last minute of the game turnovers and her horrible shot selection. Yeah, that agreed. Uh, the first 18 or so minutes of the second half was great basketball from Illinois. Uh, the first 20 minutes and the last two minutes were not good. Uh, they weren't, they just, they, they climbed all the way back, but they weren't able to, they weren't able to, to go over the edge. I mean, they, their two closers weren't really closers today. Um, they led the team in scoring. 
Um, but they they didn't have it. Uh, Matt tried. Matt wanted to, but Matt turned the ball over, um, or almost turned the ball over in his attempt to close out the game. Um, Illinois is fortunate to have two players of that skill that are able to do that, but when neither of them are able to do it, then you're kind of screwed. When it gets to that situation, I'm thinking of one shot in particular. When you're one of nine from three and it's a one possession game with under a minute left, that's not the time to be a prima donna and get yours. That's the time to say, hey, we need this win as a team more than I need a three-pointer that I'm pissed off and crying about that I didn't get the ball the last time down the court and jack something up and airball it. Let me not talking let me, about anyone in particular, but a certain person named with smash you Schmeyer. Let me ask you this question. Cause I don't disagree with you. Who would you have rather had the ball? It doesn't matter. I just want to open shot. Who else is on this team is, is do you trust to make that shot? I trust everyone on the team to make an open shot. If they get it. Were they open? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't disagree. didn't let him get open. I don't disagree with you, but I'm also saying he he is the best shooter on this team. He was he didn't have it today. He didn't have it today, but I I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yeah, Terrence Shannon had six turnovers. Um, I saw another comment, and I'll just go on with these. What whoever it was said, uh, Terrence Shannon is not a point guard. He's not a facilitator. That's um, so that's just Brian's that's here. just gonna happen. Um. Some of those weren't necessarily those kind of turnovers, but that's what the Stitch team is in now, especially without Jaden Epps, who we don't know when we'll see him again if we do. Um, so, yeah, the, the turnover situation from Shannon is is partially on him trying to do too much and also partially just because that's just not the role he's he's meant to play. He's has He hasn't had to play that role all season long up until the last two games. Uh, Brian saying Shannon getting his pocket picked twice during bringing up the ball. Uh, bringing the ball to the court is mind numbing, especially when he had a wide open outlet. Yeah, I, that's it. I mean, he's just not. That's how the game started, <laughs> was with uh, his getting yeah. his pocket pick coming up the ball, coming up the court. Um, he's not a point guard. This team currently does not have a healthy point guard on the roster. So we've been saying it all year, but today was just another example as to why you need one. And if you don't have one in the tournament, I have a hard time seeing they're going to get past the first weekend. I just. I want to see it, and I have the confidence that they can because I know this team has the talent and it has the ability to do it. But without that, it's, you're going to be in trouble. And I don't know. I haven't seen anything. I don't know the status of Jaden Epps. I, I don't know if we'll see him at all um, this coming week or the following week. But hope you do because you could use him. But obviously his health is far more important than you know him being on the court. I think this is where the game was lost more from Brian right here. The confusion coming out of the timeout with 56, 57 seconds left was embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, That's I, where I don't the game know. Was lost. I don't know what happened there. Um, they they had the long review for the clock, and then Brad called a timeout on top of that. So you not only had all your all your time from the timeout, but you had extra time. And yeah, there there was absolutely zero fluidity there. Uh, that was the offense seemed to be. Coleman trying to do something. I will say that Coleman was the point guard at the end of this game. Coleman Hawkins, I think somebody pointed out on Twitter, played the one on offense and the five on defense. Yeah, it was Isaac Trotter. Unbelievable. Um, I mean, just you can't, you just cannot say negative things about Coleman Hawkins. But uh, yeah, that was him trying to, to run something to set something up, and that, and then Matt Meyer running around just demanding the ball and not ending well. So yeah, I agree. The, that was a, a mess, and I have no idea what what went wrong there um what what was drawn up what got um got the axe on the court who knows that's what uh, that was that was awful in the chat i made the comment coming out of that the illinois and brad used to be 90 percent coming out of timeouts they'd have an open shot and make it most of them and this team, I don't know if it's the players and not understanding the play call, or I don't know if it's the assistants have changed and aren't as good with the X's and O's, but something has changed. And Illinois coming out of timeouts this year have been atrocious, where that used to be a massive strength the past couple, four or five years. Yeah, I, yeah, that, that could be. I, I don't know. Um, that could be a variety of things. It could be the coaching staff. Uh, it could be 
the team you're talking about the past <laughs> couple of years was had been together for a while. They mm-hmm. knew what they were doing. Um, seniors that had been on the roster for five years, an All American Center. Like it was a different roster than what you're dealing with now. So it could be the coaching staff, could be the players, who knows? But yeah, that was a mess. Uh, Michael saying the coach coach is baffled about our lack of execution in the first half, but mentioned how important Coleman Hawkins is. Yeah, he's he's right. Coleman Hawkins is probably the most important person on this team. He's not your most talented player. He's not going to be your leading scorer, um, but he is. That's why he plays as many minutes as he does on a night night in and night out basis. He. Only played 30 minutes today. I think he was in foul trouble in the first foul half. Foul trouble in the first half, yeah. Otherwise, he would normally play about 38 minutes a game. Jay, Big Ten will suck again in the NCAAs. No great teams really anywhere in college basketball should be interesting. Uh, yeah, Big Ten is not good. I've been tweeting it out for several weeks now. The Big Ten stinks, um, and I, I don't think I'm wrong. Um, you, know, you know what's going to happen, though. Somebody will. They're going to have four teams in the Sweet 16. One's going to yeah. go to the Final Four. Illinois is going to make an Elite Eight. And this oh, is going to wow. be the year they're going to win the national championship. I would love that. I would love that. Um, but it's not very likely. Uh, no, the Big Ten is not very good this year. Uh, Purdue is the far away the Big Ten's best team. But as I said last episode, our last show, Purdue struggles to beat good teams. Um, tonight was another example. I do think Illinois is a good team. Good enough. They're a tournament team. Uh, and they almost lost that game at home. So uh, Purdue struggles to beat to be good teams. Fortunate enough for them, they're going to get a pretty high seed. So uh, they – or low seed, however you think of it. Um, so they're going to be playing like a 15 or a 16 in the first round. So they can hopefully win that game for them. But uh, after that, who knows? Uh, Illinois, just as Joseph, Illinois showed a ton of heart. Just wish they could play two good halves in the, in the same game. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how you play a full basketball game. Doesn't have they didn't have it today. Yep, this is the comment I think I saw earlier. Shannon is not a facilitator, he's a scorer. Absolutely. Unfortunately, he has to play the point guard position on this team. Brant, hey Brant, thanks for shouting us out. Uh Shannon's in a in a Shannon is a momentum killer on offense. When the ball gets passed to him, he holds it. He never moves the ball, which is probably why he had five first half, tur- first half turnovers and Purdue had four turnovers in the first half. I don't disagree. Uh, uh, JMO here, but, uh, just my opinion here, but Meyer is kind of selfish and cost Illinois the game today. Again, just my opinion. I don't think your opinion is incorrect. Uh, normally, um, Matt Meyer's, uh, confidence and ball hogginess, uh, has benefited Illinois, but today it did not. Michael, I think Matt and Shannon were pushing too hard to be the star today. Sure. Absolutely. I don't think you're wrong. Um, but unfortunately they are the stars of this team. So you kind of have to live and die by how your best players play. Um, especially when they're really the only two players you can count on for points. Brandt, how was the foul on Edie at the end? Not a flagrant foul, two hand shoved to Meyer to the ground. Is that the, where Meyer went up and then landed on his tailbone? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah. Have you seen the, I mean, or the, the I haven't, I didn't notice that at the time. It just looked like he just flat out fell. Um, like, but I can understand that. I mean, to me, I think the wasn't a flagrant, but I mean, Shannon got fouled driving to the basket and Benetti flat out called it out. He's like, I mean, it wasn't a hard foul, but is he yeah. definitely got, there was contact there. Um, yeah. I don't know about the, the ED one. I mean, it might've been a little more than just a, just, a fouling, but I'm not sure I would say a flagrant. Um, but I have, again, I haven't really looked at that replay since then. So I, I don't think really the officials, influence the game as much as they did was it Thursday night, but I do think they were bad again. I, I do not. Well, yeah, I, I did. know because I took a screenshot of it. You and somebody else I follow both within seconds of each other commented on how uh, Zach Eady and Kofi Cobert have been officiated very differently. So ridiculous. Um, they put I, I, so much. Yeah. And I, I don't know what that is. I don't know why that is. I know players like that are hard to officiate, um, but Kofi also was a hard player to to officiate. So I don't know why it's any different. Um, playing Sox 2020, 2022 says playing ED is so annoying. Yeah. I mean, he's he's very tall. And <laughs> I mean, that's that's most of their offense. Um, unfortunately, I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think he has much of a career, a future at the professional level, especially in the no. NBA. 
And so uh, I would venture to guess you have him. What year is he? Is he a junior this year? I think he's a junior. So yeah. she probably have him for at least another year. So unfortunate there. Um, <laughs> Choke just looks like someone took his soul today. Cheer up. You'll make the second week of the tournament, buddy. Um, I'm hoping we make the ter- second week of the tournament. I was afraid to say what I told Logan right before we hit go live here. <laughs> Do you remember what I said, Logan? Um, refresh me. I'm just ready for this basketball season. Oh, to be yes. Over. Like, I yes. wasn't going to say that on air today because someone will go back and when Illinois is in the Elite Eight and be like, oh, I thought you wanted the season to be over. <laughs> so I wasn't going to say it. But, I mean, obviously, if that happens, I'll be ecstatic. But I'm, this team is just they've, – they've put me is... on the edge. This team is frustrating. This team, again, I, I know we've talked about it a lot, and I don't really know that we there's anything more we can say about it, but this team is frustrating. And it's, they're not frustrating because they're bad. They're frustrating because they are talented. Yes. Um, but yet this is the – these are the situations we run into. Leading into – I did not here, – here's the thing about this game in particular. I did not go into this game expecting a win. I didn't. No. I, I knew – and I, as I said, I know Purdue it just struggles against good teams. So, like, I really legitimately thought Illinois could win this game, but I didn't. I didn't expect to win. So, the fact that it was only a five point loss on the road in West Over Lafayette, like, I'm fine with that. But knowing how the game started and how the first half went, and had that gone just a little bit better, uh, knowing that that this could have ended in a different outcome uh that makes me feel a little differently uh derek why does this team make such dumb passes bad turnovers always lead to easy points and transition on this team uh this team is um well one without a point guard uh two they aren't very experienced they have two players that have granted we have gone through a whole season so i can't really use this excuse anymore but this play this team coming into the season had two guys that have really played meaningful minutes on the college basketball court. Um, they're just going to make stupid mistakes. You're looking at two uh, ball dominant wannabe alphas that aren't and a handful of sophomores that are super spotty and then freshmen and then Coleman, who, as we said, is, is important. This team does make dumb passes. They, I know you've talked about it. Their basketball IQ seems to be rather lacking. Um, We'll we'll have plenty of time to talk about. Um, how I saw to better fundamental basketball team. Friday night at a high school sectional than I saw from Illinois all season. I was waiting until you'd bring that up. Um, yeah, we'll have plenty of time right to. Now. We'll have plenty of time to dissect <clears throat> the uh, how to properly maybe build this team in the off season, but you got to di- live with what you have right now, and uh, this is what this team has. All um, right, let's move on. Oh, go ahead. But. This Derek Wade has been in some of our comments in chat lately. I think it's a combo of Derek Rose and Dwayne Wade. Probably, yeah. It's like someone's alter ego. Probably, like yeah. It. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's move on real quick. Uh, everyday guy. I mean, I think there's a couple different candidates here. Mm-hmm. Who Who would you say? Who stuck out to you? Um, I mean, probably sincere. Yeah. I think I think he got it. Did we give it to him Thursday as well? Probably, probably give it to him Thursday as well. But yeah, I think I think it's got to be him. Um, no, that's fair. I mean, he's obviously uh, one of the one of the main ones. I'll go Coleman. Um, only six yeah. points, but as I said, six assists, four rebounds. The man was literally running the point on this team and playing uh, mm-hmm. defensive defense as a center. So uh, he's just super valuable to this team. Wish he would have played more in this game because of foul trouble. He didn't. Um, it is what it is. Do we have? Do you want to talk about that question? Or? I'm just throwing some stuff up. Oh. Uh, do we have some good commits coming in next year? Freshmen look pretty good. I mean, there are guys coming in, but the freshmen aren't really what I'm focused on. Um, this team will need to, uh, fill serious holes that freshmen will not be able to help you with. Yeah. Um, there's not a freshman coming in, in this class that is going to be an immediate impact kind of guy, kind of guy that you need. Yeah. Um, you need other things that aren't freshmen. You're going to have to replace I know they're a headache, and I know they're frustrating, and I know you're particularly mad about one of them, but you have to replace your two, maybe your three best players after this season. Probably your three best players after this season. So freshmen will not do that. Uh, I've never been more excited for someone to graduate than Darren Chan. <laughs> um, does that mean I, – I, let me ask you this question, Brant. I assume you're still watching here. 
Do you wish Terrence Shannon was in Michigan? Honestly, like this is a serious question. I was question. surprised they made that a point. Question. Thursday night, uh, they made a point to talk about that. I was shocked. Well, here's the thing. Um, I understand how frustrating has been, and I, I get I get all of those things. But if Terrence Shannon wasn't on this team, 15 wins. You're 15 wins. You're, you're just – there wasn't anybody else that was going to come in that was going to do the things he's been able to do. I, I get the frustrations again, and I know he's been super inconsistent and he's not a super leader, super great leader on this team, and there's things you could have had in place of him. But I don't think there was anybody in the transfer portal or anybody that left this team other than obviously the – seven foot monster of a man in the post, but there, I don't, I don't know what you were going to do instead of him where you were going to have even a 20 win season. So it is what it is. I know it's frustrating, but like he's been the best player on the team for a reason. Um, Coach Steve, welcome to, welcome to the chat. And can we stop with the get rid of Brad Underwood talk? I have not been saying it. I know some people have, I know mm-hmm. the X's and O's have been an issue. We just kind of touched on that about coming out of the timeout. Um, I know the yeah the X's and O's are certainly not his strength, but I am in no way, shape, or form ready to um, move on from Brad Underwood. Uh, Brian Crawford, this team's mindset and intensity is their only barrier to going far in the tournament. If they pl- simply play both halves with the urgency they played in most second halves, they're in the Elite Eight. Yes. I would add uh, one thing to that. If they take less than 23s per game. Correct. Also. Just telling you, man. Just ask him to spot him twenty points and see if see what happens. Um, you don't have to Wesley, read all these if you want to keep moving on. I'm just throwing why not? to get get some people's comments up here. I like I like to I like the chat because you know it's it's fun. I like because the they're more fun than I am. I, I would agree with that. I mean, kind of. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Um, I don't know what else you want to talk about. We've kind of Speaking talked about of, the everyday guys. I mean, people are talking about how deflated I am. I'm just in my well, feelings you are right kind now. Of deflated. Um, Let's just move Dogs on. Dogs got blown out last night. And um, in attendance. I did see Brant chimed in to answer him, my question did he? for him. Okay. Oh, I was going to talk about that. The, oh, you want to talk about this question? What are the chances Coleman Hawkins stays? Oh, no, I think he, he's going to the draft, and I think he'll get drafted. I don't think he stays. Yeah. I agree. There was a – I was talking with someone. Oh, because U of I has the new uh, NIL initiative. Yep. That if they do enough work, that they maybe kind of like the Kofi conversation last year. You know, if if he's being if Coleman's being told he's not going to be drafted until second round, mid mid second round, he could potentially make more money in Illinois than a second round draft pick. So I guess he could stay, but like we've been saying all year, and all the scouts say he's a prototypical NBA guy. I yeah. mean, he's I think he'll be a decent pro. So I I don't think he'll be back, but. With all the NIL stuff Illinois has going, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. I I agree with you there. Um, all right. Let's Where's move Brant on. Brant at? Oh, yeah. He may, he answered my question about Terrence Shannon. This one? I think. Yes. Brant says, the answer to the Terrence Shannon question, let Michigan have his 10 points and six turnovers. Sure, in this particular game. But again – you would not have 20 wins without Terrence Shannon on this roster. You just wouldn't flat out. Um, and I will not, I will not back down from that stance. Um, Here's what, all right. before we move on. Uh, Gregory Helton. What's up, man? Uh, why? What has Brad really done? He's been here six years. and hasn't, haven't been past the second round of the tournament. Um, true. Um, I don't disagree. That is obviously a fact, um, a statement of, of truth. In fact, um, what are you gonna do? Who are you gonna bring in? You got you got somebody. You're gonna bring in somebody from a mid major. Awesome. Same that, thing. Go ahead. That Sorry. I I don't I don't know what you're gonna do. This the Brad. This is the most success Illinois basketball has had in two decades. Um, this is another twenty win season. I understand. We the tournament hasn't even started yet. So like this team could possibly make it past the first weekend of the tournament. Then all of a sudden, oh, Brad's the greatest coach in Illinois basketball history. Like, I I just I don't. I'm out on that. I, I'm out on the Brad Underwood negative train. Like, I just think it's ridiculous. Like, I get it. Yes, this particular team that he built ended up having a lot more flaws than I think he anticipated. But this is a whole entirely new world of basketball we're working with here. Um, this transfer portal is brand new. Uh, NIL is brand new. 
he didn't know what he was going to have. Um, and he's not, he can't control what happened with Sky Clark just up and leaving the program halfway through the year. I mean, if, if we get a few more years into this thing and Illinois still hasn't made the second weekend and they're not giving you 20 win seasons, then maybe. But this is the best run of Illinois basketball we have had in two decades. So you want to go back to John Gross? Is that is that how you would rather see this? Like what what is what is the better option? You think coach you think Calipari's coming to Champaign? N- no. <laughs> I mean, what do you want? I don't know. That's you it. just touched on what I was researching while you were looking up. After 2007. So obviously Illinois 05 runner up, 06 second round, 07 first round. From 08 to 17, the year John Gross was fired. 10 seasons. Only made three NCAA tournaments. Two of those were with Bruce in 09 and 11. Gross made one his first year. People have to understand. We put up with John Gross. One NCAA tournament. Brad has now gone back to back to back. Should be back to back to back to back had COVID not happened. Yes, his first two seasons were atrocious, but you also have to think his first two seasons, he signed Io DeSumo, he signed Kofi Coburn. That's why we are here. Like, Illinois was here. They were basement in the Big Ten. And now they finished top four three years in a row, and they're going to be one game out of second place in this season because of the the logjam. And to go back quickly – to go back quickly to the COVID year thing too, that team, granted, they weren't playing as well. Uh, that wasn't as good of a team as they were like the year after. That was obviously the most disappointing year. But yeah. that team was playing so well at the end of that COVID season. So you you never know. Like had that not happened, you might have had a couple wins in March. I mean, you I mean, and that could have been a, a Sweet 16 team. It would have been a surprise Sweet 16. Yes. They would have been like a, I don't know, six seed maybe. Um so but like, side. I think they were consistent. Whatever. Side. So, um, I, I don't know. I'm just the the Brad Underwood negativity that that and um, I'm not there. The Sorry. narrative of past the second round. Think of the matchups. 2021, the best team Illinois had since the national title run. You got the one seed. You got matched up with an eight seed Loyola, who was tenth in the country in Ken mm-hmm. Palm. They were seated mm-hmm. incorrectly, and then last year. You get a five-seeded Houston, who was number two in Ken Palm in the country. They were not seeded correctly. Illinois has not gotten a good draw in Brad's last two NCAA tournaments. Yep. Okay, I think we've done enough on that. Um, let's move on. Um, Illinois now uh, heads to Chicago for the Big Ten tournament. We do not know when they're going to play. Uh, we don't know what seed they're going to be. As it was said several times on the broadcast before going into this game, Illinois could have been seeded anywhere two through nine based on the outcome of today's games. Cause there are still four more basketball games. We played in the big 10 today. Um, after the loss, Illinois, I believe is going to be seven, eight or nine seven, eight or nine. Yeah. Um, so we kind of have, I mean that eight and nine play each other. So you, you have two options at this point. Um, I don't even have that up. I should have had that up in front of me. Um, I'm uh, trying to pull it up right now. They will play Thursday. Yes. Um, the eight and nine would be the second game. So the first game is at like what twelve or twelve thirty. Eight nine is um, the first game of the day. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So they would either play at eleven a.m. Central Time on Thursday if they're the eight or the nine seed, or if they're able to get to the seven seed, depending on what else happens today, they would play at five thirty Central Time um, on. Thursday as well. So you're either Nebraska looking at 11 o'clock on, on Iowa right now. You're either looking at 11 o'clock noon Eastern or 5 30, 6 30 Eastern um, on Thursday. Um, not even going to, I don't know who the possible matchups there would be. It, again, anybody that's playing today, it could be a number of teams. So uh, we don't need to dwell on that too much. Um, but then after that, after the Big Ten tournament, obviously we go to go to the NCAAs. So, um, I don't know. It's possible this is our last post game show. Um, That's what I was gonna say if they uh, if they play the the eleven o'clock a.m. game on Thursday, um, we impossible. both have day jobs. So <laughs> I don't know that we're gonna be able to do a show. Uh, I think we'll be lucky if we're able to watch the game. 
Um, if they are the seven seed and they do play later, then then we would do a show Thursday. Uh, Friday would be the same thing. If they're the eleven seed, or if they if they're the eight or the nine, and they win on Thursday, they're also going to play at eleven a.m. on Friday. So if they're the eight or the nine seed, we're probably not going to have a post game show uh, for the Big Ten tournament for the first two first two games if they were to make it that far. So, and then who knows in the NCAA's? You can play at noon or you could play at ten o'clock at night. So um, or anywhere in between. Um, anything else in the chat you want to bring out before we shut this thing down? Um, or any other comments from you before we shut this thing down? No, I mean, it's just people talking about Brad. Oh, good. We've got a conversation started. Yeah. Uh, anyone who wants to fire Underwood doesn't know basketball. Losing to Houston last year was not a bad loss. They were underseated. Agreed. Same thing with Loyola. Loyola was still a bad loss, but they were also drastically underseated. Uh, Lou Henson got off to a slow start also. Correct. I don't know that this is a slow start no. for, for Brad. I mean, I mean the first two years were rough, but yeah. No, um, that, I mean, that's about it. Other than, And Brad makes a good point. And p- coaches say this all the time, that it's a, it's a dream job. It's a destination job. I mean, I'm not sold that Brad's going to be here for his entire career. I think if he has success, no. I think one of the Blue Bloods are going to come calling, a la Bill I Self. And, and Brad would jump at that opportunity, but you just got to enjoy it while you can. I agree. But that's it. No one um, all right. So with the loss today, Illinois Falls finishes the regular season 20 and 11 and 11 and 9 in Big Ten play. Again, uh, Big Ten tournament next. We'll just have to see what happens. Um, if we don't have another post game show uh, for a while, uh, thank you, everybody that has joined us on these. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I don't think when we started doing this a couple years ago that we anticipated uh, this would be our future. Uh, but we've had a lot of people that have joined the page and uh, joined these shows, and we really do appreciate that. It's been really cool. Um, hopefully they're the seventh seed, and we have another show on Thursday. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know that that's likely at this point. Um, I know a week from today is a busy day for you, but last year we did a selection Correct. Sunday show. Correct. Yes. We will be doing um, a selection okay. show as well. <laughs> it's also the same day as the Oscars, so – uh, if you know me at all, you know that that's a very big day. Probably um, bigger than – you probably Christmas. care about the Oscars <laughs> it's more. It's probably than bigger than Christmas. Sunday. Yeah. Um, not necessarily, but they're both very, very close. Like I would – not that we need to get into like my you know life and everything, but it'd probably be like normally like Christmas and then you know like one, 2A and 2B are kind of like this, but definitely more so the Super Bowl Sunday – like selection show and Oscars day are like my two days and now they're on the same day. So yes, yeah, Sunday is going to be a very busy day for me personally. So you feel like a day has been taken away from you because normally you get to sort of two days. Sort of, yes. It's one. Sort of. Yes. I feel like it's uh yes, I, yes, that's true. But yes, we will do us. We will definitely do a selection show Sunday, regardless of what happens in the big 10 tournament, regardless of if we have post game shows in the big 10 tournaments or in the, in the NCAAs, uh, we will definitely have a post game show on Sunday. Um, What else? I got something for you. Baseball season. You're going to pull out a Cardinal shirt, huh? Oh, my God. I hate you so much. <laughs> oh, I hate I didn't you know the, so I much. Didn't know the, I didn't know the Cubs had red shirts. Oh, my God. Oh. For those oh. listening on the audio version of this show, when you hear it later, Craig just pulled out his Wilson Contreras Cardinal jersey, and <laughs> I'm about to reach through the screen and – rip his neck off um did you get my gift i haven't talked to you yeah yeah good i did get your gift like the day after it was like the day after you told me thank you for that i have not really broken it out yet um to (sighs) to kind of quiz myself i don't really have anybody to play with i don't think i'm the same way but (laughs) um we'll we'll find a way to tie that into our show at some point um (laughs) we will be back to doing regular shows at some point as well for any of you that are that have been og listeners or viewers of the show we do talk about other things other than Illini basketball but that's obviously been the the focal point of the show for the last few weeks so once basketball season does come to an end for the Illini we will we will dive into other things speaking of that i will have another show on this feed uh this week that is a movie uh top two movies of the year show that i'm putting together with a friend of mine uh this week so if you're interested in that type of stuff uh that'll be up on our youtube and it's social up uh, spotify and apple and all that stuff later this week any f- final comments from you craig go panthers go pinkneyville panthers um 
All right. That's going to do it for us. He's Craig. I'm Logan. Final West Lafayette, 76, 71 Boilers, uh, Illinois, 20 and 11 on the season, 11 and nine in big 10 play to finish out the year. Uh, we might see it on Thursday. Uh, we might not. We'll just have to see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's going to sign it. We're going to do it for us. Uh, until then.